I start as a, a painter, you know, I come from a small village of North Italy near Venice. I was working with a, with a monk and a monastery doing a restoration of a 16th century fresco and oil painting restoration for the churches. Then I moved to Rome and up to uh, work with uh, a very well-known famous uh, painter. I was part of the studio. One day a famous actor, Italian act, his name is Giuliano Gemma, he, he made so many uh, film western, remember the spaghetti western came to the studio and invited me to the set. I am on a set for the first time, on a movie set. What I learned there that there was another way to express yourself through visual, which is not just painting. I got fascinated by that experience. And just a few months later, they called me back for another movie and then another one. So I started to work into the art department first. So I started to work more into visual. I ended up to meet Francis Coppola, brought me to the Godfather 3 where I did the storyboard for the movie. Being on a meeting, creative meeting with Francis, we had a chance to talk during the Godfather about the grammar of the movie, how we were going to use a 25 millimeters lens for master shot, how the camera was always six feet high, you know, and it was straight, there was no Dutch angle. What the grammar for a close-up, what about the use of behind the shoulder on close-up? Francis is, is somebody that really is the classic director. And after that, he invites me to United States. I arrived to United States doing visual for Warren Beatty, for, um, bunch of great talented directors, I start working with Tim Burton. All these great filmmakers, they all have a strong component of art. If you see Tim Burton drawing, it is amazing. I really got the confidence, thank you to working with those guys. Working with all these great, great guys here in Hollywood that gave me the opportunity to make some, uh, some good artwork that actually people can recognize on the movies. For example, uh, uh, this uh, is a, an elaboration of a sketch that I did for the legend of the Sleepy Hollow. This is the Tree of the Dead. Actually, we did a three or four different sketches on that. This is actually the original sketch. This is another sketch, a refined sketch. This is the refined sketch of the Sleepy Hollow tree. Actually, I saw a picture of a crocodile jumping out of the water and turning, and so that got me the inspiration for, for that tree. So you can look a little bit like a crocodile coming out of the water. I also did an amazing movie that I consider one of the best movies I ever worked uh, from the visual point of view, which was What Dreams May Come. The whole team there with Eugenio Zanetti, who is an amazing uh, artist himself, you know, he was the production designer. He put together a great team of artists and we did uh, all the art for the movie. I, in that movie, I designed the big staircase that goes to heaven and a bunch of elements that you can see into the into the part where Robin Williams goes to heaven. Parts of the Caribbean, I made the David Jones ships, you know, you probably remember that when the boat comes out of the water and the front of the boat is a skeleton, you know, kind of figure, kind of all encrusted, you know, that's my art. This was on a original um, uh, first idea on the Pirates of the Caribbean on a David Jones uh, uh, ship, how the the, 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 the front part, when he emerged, you know, it's just like a skeleton, you know. So that was uh, really served as an inspiration for for the old style of the old David Jones ship. This is the David Jones ship for the Pirates in the Caribbean. This artwork has been um, used also for marketing purpose. Uh, on the dark shadow, there is a main staircase. Well, I probably have 20 different versions of this staircase. 20. 20, even even more. See see how the, the staircase ends up with those fishes here? While there's so many versions of this, like for example, this is another version of that. Gosh, unbelievable. See, see now how it is, right? 
See, this shows to you, for example, the, the creative process, right? From here, right? Look how, how like it is a light, is you know. But look at the other one, which is this one. See, so you may go through, um, a, you know, with the director and the production designer through in a big movie that they, they can afford to have a 20 different version until you go with the right one. Tarantino, I did the the eight for eight on the Star Wars. Did uh, some of the work for the Casino Hotel and for the Jedi Temple, which is inside a, a petrified tree. And there is a kind of altar, let's say, with where the with the special books is is being held there. The last. Uh, movie that I work, Dumbo, that uh, Tim Burton uh, just did, which is not out yet, so I cannot talk much about that. I have to try to understand the story and the journey of the hero to create the best environment. That's the correct approach. There's other people, other artists that have an approach which is more uh, fashionable. They look something cool and they just put it in there. But I think a, a, a visual should serve the story. On the props, design. It's extremely important that type of design because uh, the props are actors. Like you remember the knife of Rambo, you know, because uh, he defined his personality. So the props actually is an actor. He acts in the story. The glasses uh, or the sunglasses of a Mission Impossible. The use of the props, you want to try to figure it out, something become memorable for the actor to wear or to use. Another interesting thing that you do as a concept artist, right? What you do, you do something that is called a set extension, right? So you basically have, um, you have a real location in England. We want to make this into 1940 style. So that's what you do. You add, see like they have, they, you have a, a water tank on top of the roof there. They don't, they don't exist here. You know, so you kind of take an image and, and you add element and then later they will do that with a computer with the CG. Let me show you another sample of this uh, because this is an interesting, fascinating. Uh, this is an interesting special, specialization. Um, I remember I was telling you there's a many different, uh, many different um, area uh, on concept design. One of the area is uh, set extension. Um, like this is like a modern city, how it is now, and here we put all the shops, see? Or, let me see if I find something that can show you something interesting. For example, let me tell you something that may, uh, people that are not familiar with the industry, they may like this, this thing. For example, right? There is a scene where we, in Capitan America, where uh, there is actually a crashing into a, into a building into a shop, chase and a crash. Now, of course, you cannot crash into a real building in a real city. So what you do, you find a place like here where you actually have an alley with a gate, right? So what we do, we built a store in front of that. So we turn all this 1940, we built a store actually. So now when the car chases the little blue line, boom, they can crash through this because this is not really an existing location. It's just added for the purpose of the breaking and the action. So now you do, it's called site extension because you take an image, you show how it looks like with uh, additional stuff that you put in CG, for example, you know, and when you remove something modern, like you remove the light, for example, in CG, and then you actually build something extra. You actually um, create an extra set there. Also, let me tell you another category of concept design is the part related to visual effect. Because you need to create an idea of the visual effect before even they make it, right? So for example, let me give you an example. Visual effect concept, right? This is the frame they shot on, on, on camera. They put a little light in his hands, right? There should be something coming out from his hands that kind of, uh, you know, affect the, 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 the actor. Now here's my idea. I actually paint this and I gave an explanation to this effect. It's called the beam of light moves like a spiral, almost like a projection of his internal DNA. See? 
So this is a this is an idea that you propose to them. Now, if they like it, then they will have a, a company that does visual effect to try to create in, in in full rendering and in live action. They will try to create that that effect. Um, and uh, again, you propose several idea. See. Look at this, even different. So even for visual effect, they don't just come with the visual effect out of, uh, okay, let's plug the computer, you know, no. They, they need an idea on, you know, to visualize what is going to be. Like this one, for example, something happened here. No, I, my idea was this, or maybe this. Or maybe this. The transition between concept art and uh, director didn't happen just overnight. Uh, it, sometimes the two things still overlap. While I was doing artwork or big movie, I was always trying to do a smaller movie or a small or a short movie uh, for myself. I think the two things will always be together. Also, if I do my own movie, I probably will do my own concept art for my own movie. So I will say, you know, the two things work together. One of the a film that uh, I did that I'm very proud of all is actually a small movie called Why Shoe. It was uh, done for Salvatore Ferragamo and it, and it actually uh, was running for Academy and got recon good recognition at the Mill Valley Film Festival. It's a movie that narrates the story of the little Salvatore Ferragamo but in a fairy tale way. So I recommend everybody, it's online, everybody want to see it, I recommend it to see it. It shows a lot about um, great photography, great music and uh, great performance. I'm very happy with that. I think that will represent more my, my world and, and, and also a good sense of visual is expressed on that on the, on the little short movie. After that, I work on a couple of feature films, more commercial uh, projects. Uh, the last one was done in Canada, starring Wesley Snipe and RJ Meat from uh, Breaking Bad. Wesley was fantastic. When he came on the set, you know, the first day, I was a little like concerned myself. Oh, this is a big star, he's an action guy. And actually I realized this guy is an artist. You see him on an action movie where he breaks everything, but actually his acting is like Shakespearean. I was very, very pleased with that. So that was a great experience. Well, have a nice day, huh? It's important to me is to make to make movie so I can put the art and the writing together. This is actually a project that I have. That is uh, a movie that I'm going to do, which I don't want to disclose yet. Uh, but it's a big fairy tale, and uh, I shouldn't show to you what it is here because does it say that? <laughs> that's okay. We'll that's okay. No, that's okay. That's okay. You can. This you, is incredible. If, art, if, if somebody can read that little one, that's okay for them to know. That's okay for them to know if they can I see read that it. I will say. I'll, I'll block yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You don't have to block it out. Only for those that can read it. 